All right, you guys, so it's super, super loud in there. But today we are doing a bunch of stuff to the Evo 10 that we've been waiting to do so that we can get the car back out on a track and actually be a little bit more competitive this time around. So today we're doing a whole brake kit. We're leaving the calipers from the Evo 10, but we're doing pads, lines, fluid, and rotors. Plus, we've got a really cool package of stuff from White Line to beef up the suspension just a little bit. But first, we got to go get it so we can get it over here by Tiny's desk where we're going to be doing all the work. So let's go get those parts. You guys so as you can see we're gonna go with some motul rbf 660 brake fluid we've got some pads today we're going with the raybestos st43 pads along with some good old hit the brakes stop tech slotted rotors these are pretty awesome. We've obviously got Freebird going on in the background, so hopefully we don't get copyright for this, but it's a super long song. So maybe if I just talk loud enough, YouTube won't get us. Uh, then we've got some White Line stuff here. So uh, I'll wait to tell you a little bit about what White Line products we got till after we go ahead and get the brakes taken care of. Uh, Want to give a huge shout out to White Line for sending all this stuff out to us. Uh, they sent it to us a long time ago when we originally planned to do this build and we are just now finally getting around to it. So White Line, thank you. It does not go unnoticed. Anyways, let's get this stuff out and get the car up in the air. All right, you guys, so Tiny actually used to be a Mitsubishi tech. He's also a Subaru tech. Uh, so I feel like the brake stuff is very well within his realm of knowledge that he's done before. So I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have him walk us through exactly how to do this stuff on the first one and then i'll take care of the other four and i probably won't film as much of that because it'll be very clunky the other, the other three there are not five wheels on an evo 10. not yet not yet if you want to see that kind of content click like and subscribe to the channel maybe we can make that happen i've been training him really really well so we're getting the wheel off obviously for those of you who don't know how to change your brakes that is very obviously step one there's some meaty boys, dude. Yeah, you put Ten these, and a half. You put these on when I wasn't. This is giant. This is like huge. Yeah, there's some meats. These for like eight. So as you guys can see, I know we've talked about this before, but these brakes suck. Uh, the rotors, like, they're not in terrible shape, I guess. Or what do, what do you think? You're the tech. Uh, I mean, they've got some grooves they, in them. They've, they've got, they've, uh, they've seen some stuff for sure. So for one, we need to upgrade the pads. Two, we're gonna upgrade the fluid, we're gonna upgrade the rotors, and we're gonna upgrade the lines. So that's what you're gonna see today. Tiny, like I said, is gonna walk us through this one, and then I'll do the other one, two, three, not four. So. It's almost as if the last episode of the Evo, everyone told you that brakes were most important. Huh. That's crazy. That's so weird. That's thing. crazy. Yeah, so nonetheless, uh, shout out to Jackie Ding for the advice. But yeah, like everybody was saying when we were up at Grid Life, um, brakes are the most important thing when you go to the track more important than power mods so we knew that we just hadn't gotten around to it yet because we hadn't identified what we were going to do but i wanted to get on the track bad enough to send it anyways probably not the best thing to do uh but de actually definitely not the best thing to do but nonetheless we're going to go ahead and tackle this one here so i'm gonna get that footage of tiny doing the work So Tanya, what kind of tools are we going to need for this brake job? So, you're going to need a hammer. Check. A punch. 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 Okay. And uh, I don't know off the top, I, I want to say it's a 17 to get the calipers off. These are 
fix fit or fix calipers because they the caliper doesn't move, just pistons press out. So all you have to do is take out the two caliper bolts and then it'll slide out of the way to change the rotors. So as you guys can see, the rotor and the old pads are obviously out. There's the old rotor, nothing else here. So what's uh, what's next on the agenda? So uh, next up, we're gonna clean the face of this hub just so you have a good mating surface. You don't have any run out in the rotor. When you get in a car and jam on the brakes and you kind of feel the, the wheel uh, shake a little shake bit, a little bit uh, they can be due to a lot of things, but sometimes that's due to uh, rotor run out. Uh, which then leads to thickness variation and that, that does all sorts of things. So I guess I just wanted to take this a second, kind of show you what we're dealing with here. We can see that there's a little bit of damage here, uh, a little bit of uneven wear on this pad and that's evident on the rotor too. It looks like there was maybe like a rust ridge or something here that got uh, kind of taken down over time and that's uh, done, yeah. done some damage both the pad and the rotor, which uh, could cause a, a number of different things, but just, uh, just something that we caught taking it apart. So definitely, it's a good thing that we're changing these not only for performance but just overall maintenance on the car hell yeah all right so now we're gonna go ahead are we doing the lines next or we do that after we so get everything we'll else do, in we'll do the lines after everything's in because then uh you'll have an idea of where everything goes to route your lines i mean generally they just about oem but sometimes you have a little bit of wiggle room and you need to make sure that everything's where it's supposed to be and okay. then everything will be hard mounted so you can crack lines off easier so once we get everything all back assembled we'll throw the lines on um and then once all the lines and all the brakes are changed, we'll throw the auto bleeder on it and uh, get it all bled up. I also want to throw out that now would normally be the ideal time to powder coat these crusty boys, but uh, just not enough time to get it done before the next track day. So we're going to send it with these and maybe that'll be an over the winter type thing that we do. So nonetheless, these are going to go back on as is, but don't worry guys. We're not going to leave them like that forever. At least I hope it'll get done eventually. Give them the, uh... Let us know in the comments what color you think these bad dogs Ooh, should be. I like that. Yeah, let us know in the comments what color you think these bad dogs should be. Uh, keep in mind, we got these hyper blue wheels, so don't say anything stupid, because then I won't do it. I don't know, man. Orange and blue? Huh? Huh? That might be sick. Let us know down below, you guys. What do you want to see? What color should these calipers be? I almost call them the rotor. I'm an idiot. You could probably with the rotor, too. It might just not work. It's just not a very good idea. Yeah. So just a couple of things we wanted to share with you guys before we threw these on. Obviously we're uh, kind of taking our time and making sure we do this job absolutely right and kind of walking you guys through it. Um, so with these rotors, uh, some more high performance rotors are directional and they're uh, labeled side to side. So you have front, front and rear is pretty obvious. Generally they're different sizes, but sometimes you have a left and a right. So in this case we have, this is a left front. So I'm gonna have to grab the that other one. L is the dead giveaway. Yep, the L is the one that tells you. Just something that is kind of, you could look over. You wanna make sure you check when you're putting a, a nice rotor like this on it. Another thing that goes for all brake jobs, um, when these come in the packaging, they generally have a, a film of oil on them. Um, yeah, you can kind of see it even yeah. like right in here. That, that keeps them uh, fresh in the packaging for as long as they sit on the shelf. Um, what you want to do, a lot of people will just douse these in brake clean and call it good enough. I would strongly recommend not doing that because brake clean, however, will take it off the surface. Um, you really need to get uh, some hot soapy water in here to pull the oil that's in the pores of the metal out. So. We'll bring this over to the wash bay, uh, get some hot soapy water on it, and that should take out any oil and contaminants on here that could potentially mess up our new brake pads. So for people who don't have a wash bay for parts washer at home, just hot water from the uh, sink? Hot water in the sink, you know, if you're roughing it, apartment style like me, yeah, just dishwasher, not dishwasher, you know, main sink, turn it on hot, get some dish soap in there, and just scrub them really good. And I'm picturing somebody right now putting their rotors in the dishwasher. I don't, I, I mean, I, I, keep, I think it might get the job done, but I, I think you'd be a little bit quicker to just throw Is that a dishwasher? No, it's a no, it's a parts cleaner. A disc washer. A disc washer. Yeah. 
used uh, just an angle grinder with a cleaning pad disc. I mean, I'm sure pretty much, I'm sure most of you have seen, at least seen this before. If uh, they don't have something like this at home, like air tools, what could they use? Uh, you could use like a scotch fry pad. Um, that would probably be your best, your best option for something. Just for all you DIY or something you're gonna wanna invest in. They make electric versions of these too. So if you don't want to invest in an air compressor, which I totally understand because I'm slowly converting to all electric tools anyways. So last step to just kind of ensure prolonged life of all your parts put on here. I like to throw some sort of a lubricant or a rust prevention on the uh, rotors, the rotor and the hub uh, face. That way you keep from corrosion from happening there the next time. You give these a little a spray here in the, on the face and then when they mate on the hub, uh, give something to keep the rust out of here. Like I said, white lithium grease or anti-seize should do the trick. If somebody else gives you uh, a different tip that works better for you, then uh, that's all cool. So this is just what I use. So, uh, that's all we got done and then we're gonna start throwing it back together. All right, uh, before we start putting the brake pads in, we're just gonna make sure we go through and clean and lubricate all the moving parts. Uh, obviously too, didn't get any filming of this, but you wanna push these uh, pistons back into place before you can put the pads back in. Uh, get yourself a piston pusher tool. I guess I can't think of the name right now. Sell them everywhere, uh, great tool to have. Also, we'll get some footage of me uh, cleaning these up. These are the pins that hold the uh, pads in place. We're gonna clean those on the wire wheel that's behind Charlie over there. You don't have a wire wheel to use. Um, scotch bike works good or um, some steel wool. Any kind of uh, not super harsh abrasive cleaning tool that you have that you can use it by hand will work just fine to clean these up. All right, you guys, so the front passenger side is completely done. The only thing we'll have left to do is the lines. Before we do the lines, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other ones, the other three, uh, but we're not gonna film that very much. It'll probably just be like a time-lapse sort of thing. Um, how would you uh, say this went? I mean, what would you say? Uh, I'd say it's perfect. I didn't, I didn't run into any weird hiccups. Hopefully you guys got something out of it. Yeah, I mean, so like brake service is like obviously a regular routine maintenance thing for anybody's car, be it a performance vehicle or not. Um, but as we learned or maybe expressed more or less because i don't think it was something we didn't obviously know um as we expressed in the last few videos having good brakes if you're gonna go to the track is probably the most important thing that you could possibly do for your car now if you guys are evo 10 owners this exact kit that we're putting on the car is going to be a kit now on our site for track use on your evo 10 so we have a street kit with different pads and different rotors and different fluid we're gonna have this kit as a track kit for your Evo 10. The link will be down below. Check it out if you guys are looking for a track rotor pad fluid in line setup for your Evo 10. Uh, it's what we think will be a great uh, entry level track setup as far as your brakes go. So uh, it allows you to retain use of the factory Brembo brakes and it uses just a standard one-piece rotor so you're not investing thousands and thousands of dollars into two-piece rotors although in time that pays for itself the investment is worth it however if you're just getting into it maybe not sure how many track days you're going to do this is a great starter entry level track brake kit so check it out on the site link will be down in the description i'm going to go ahead and get busy on the rest yeah, of these brakes I, I, I would say that this is like a good uh like weekend warrior like you're gonna go to a track days pretty frequently and maybe rip around some back roads kind of deal it's not going to be something that you can drive on the street it just might yeah. be a little a little aggressive on the on the aggressive side but still something uh pretty comfortable on the wallet and just driving it you know often on the street yeah yeah so i mean like again if you're going to go ahead and get into track days and also be like you said a weekend warrior check this kit out it's going to be an awesome option for you um i'm going to go ahead and get these other three done all right, you guys, so all of the rotors and pads are done, as you can see. Uh, we're getting on to doing the lines, and because I know some of you guys are actually gonna be getting this exact same kit, 
or maybe just replacing the brake lines on your Evo 10 in general, I just want to let you know there is a difference between the fronts and the rears. So um, the rears are going to have the end like this and the other side of it looks like that. So these are for the rear. The fronts are like this. So those are the fronts, those are the rears. Anyways, now we're gonna go ahead and get the lines replaced. Then we'll be able to get our new fluid in and we'll be ready to test drive it. So uh, the first thing you're gonna do is uh, crack these soft, well, you're gonna crack the hard lines loose where they connect to the soft lines. Um, and then you'll see that there's a little retaining clip here and you'll just uh, pull that off. Uh, some pliers, get those off for you in a pinch, no problem. Uh, and then the whole soft line will just slide out. When you're taking these uh, nuts off, these right here, uh, for the brake line, it's important that you use a line wrench. Uh, this will ensure you don't round these off. They slip over the line and... Uh, that was pretty slick. It's, it's sort of like a box, you know, you're supposed to use a box end wrench on a nut when you take it off, not the, not the open end. So it's the same thing, but just for when you have a hard line like this. Okay, so once you loosen those and everything, you'll be able to slip the lines off. Uh, that's one end, on the other end, it just comes comes out? It's sa same process. So okay. there's, there's another um, line nut here and then another clip and you just pull that off and then you'll be able to slide it out. All right, so same process, both sides. Once you get them off, then you'll obviously just insert the new one, tighten it down, and you're good to go, right? Yeah, reverse order of what you just did. Easy enough. All right, you guys, so we just finished installing the rotors, lines, pads, and getting the new fluid in the car. Everything is good to go. The car is looking great. These calipers need to be powder coated, but hopefully that'll be coming very soon very excited to see how these perform we do have some other work we need to do on the car still for example um, we've got this whole white line uh, suspension kit to put on so we're not going to be actually taking the car off the lift so you guys will have to stay tuned for the next episode to see that happen again we are going to be upgrading the sway bars and some other stuff as well uh, for the next track day event so if you guys wanna see more of that content, make sure that you subscribe and stick around so that you don't miss it. Uh, lastly, leave us a big old thumbs up if you like this video. If you're interested in getting this new uh, track kit for your Evo 10, go ahead and check the link in the description because we'll have a new kit there ready for you. And last but not least, leave us a comment. Let us know what you thought. We'll see you guys in the next video. Until next time, peace.